let's say you're counting currency, right? You have you have like a stack of uh, currency notes, bills, and you're you're counting it. Okay. Now, for example, imagine somebody comes and pulls out currency from what you've counted, or you inserts currency in what you're counting. Are you gonna go? I'm gonna continue counting. No, you're gonna stop and go. Okay. Now I'm gonna have to start from the beginning, right? That's what's happening here. There is this concept called fail fast iterators. Okay, this is also something that tends to get asked in interviews. What are fail fast iterators? The iterator that I just showed you using the iterator pattern for collections is a fail fast iterator. It means that the iterator is not tolerant to underlying changes. What do I mean by that? When you get an iterator from a collection, you're basically saying, here is the state of my collection, and here is my iterator. Now, this iterator or instance knows how to iterate over this collection. And you know it, it is familiar with what's in the collection. It knows how to go from one to the other. Now imagine, while you're iterating over it, you modify the underlying collection. Okay, you insert an object somewhere in between or you remove an object somewhere. Now, what ends up happening is the collection has a different state than what it was when the iterator was created. This is not okay. The iterator is gonna go, no, I don't know how to deal with this. This is not okay for me. So you're gonna get an exception, right? The way this does it is by the collection uses an internal modification counter, something called mod counter. So there's, a, there's an internal counter that it uses. So anytime you modify a collection, it keeps track of that mod counter. When an iterator is created, it knows what that mod counter is. After that iterator is created, every time it does an iteration, it checks, is the mod counter the same? Has nobody modified it, okay? If the mod counter is different, if somebody has changed the collection underneath, it's gonna go, Oops, I don't, know how to, how, I don't know how to iterate, right? I thought I was over here, now I don't know how to iterate. It's gonna throw a concurrent modification exception. If that mod counter has been modified since the previous next, since the last time the next method was called, it's gonna go, oops, I don't know what to do. It's almost like, think about it, right? Like you're, uh, let's say you're uh, counting currency, right? You have, you have like a stack of uh, currency notes bills and you're, you're counting it, okay? Now, for example, imagine somebody comes and pulls out currency from what you've counted or you inserts currency in what you've counted. Are you gonna go, I'm gonna continue counting? No, you're gonna stop and go, okay, now I'm gonna have to start from the beginning, right? That's what's happening here. The iterator assumes that, okay, while I'm iterating over, I don't want anybody changing this because it doesn't know, right? So for example, it's iterating over at some point. If somebody adds an entry before, should it go back? or should it stay there? It doesn't know, right? It breaks that contract that an iterator has. So this is what is called fail fast iterators, okay? When you're using collections, when you're using the default iterator of collections, you get fail fast iterators. There are some uh, other iterators which are not fail fast. We will probably cover this when we talk about that, but by default, assume that they're fail fast iterators. Here is what the Java doc says, fail fast iterators throw concurrent modification exception on a best effort basis, okay? I wanna highlight this because what does best effort mean, okay? Best effort means that it is going to try its best to alert you that something is wrong, okay? If you're counting notes and somebody sneaks up without you knowing, right, they're super fast or you're looking somewhere else and they sneak and they add a note, you don't know you're gonna continue counting and you're gonna end up with an error, okay? You're not gonna throw an exception. You're not gonna go, oh, now I can't count, right? That's the exception. You're gonna still continue counting, but you're gonna get incorrect results, okay? That's what this is saying. It's, like, it's saying the framework is gonna try and throw a concurrent modification exception. It's gonna do its best effort to throw the exception, but the exception is not guaranteed, okay? So you cannot, for example, catch concurrent modification exception and go, okay, when this exception is thrown, only then I know that something was modified, okay? That's not the case. It's gonna try to throw the exception, but sometimes you can modify the collection without the exception being thrown, okay? So you're not supposed to do that, right? And you cannot trust the exception 
to be thrown is what this means, okay? So what you should do instead, I see that in the chat, that's the way to do it. There are some iterators who have features to modify the collection, the underlying collection, okay? The iterator knows where it is, so you, you can ask the iterator and go, okay, you know best where you are, so you modify, right? I'm not gonna modify it, so you modify it, so you know where to go next, okay? So one example for that is iterator.remove, okay? So I'm gonna put this back, iterator here. Now here, I can do iterator dot, you see there is a remove here. I can say, let's say for example, I wanna remove a banana, okay? So I can check for this and go, if the fruit string is banana, then I wanna remove it. Yeah, you can do that, right? So you can ask the iterator to remove it so that the collection is not modified without the iterator knowing. You're kind of going through the formal process of the iterator. So the iterator knows how to adjust and go to the next thing, okay? So that's, that's what you're supposed to be using. Ideally, you should not modify the collection underneath. What is the iterator pattern? The iterator pattern is a way to traverse the collection of objects without exposing the underlying representation. As Java developers, you're gonna be working with a lot of collections, okay? Each collection has its own way of storing objects, its own way of retrieving objects, its own way of finding objects. So if you have to do a simple task of given a collection, I wanna just print all of them, or I want to search for something in all of them, right? You're basically traversing the whole collection. Well, since each collection stores things differently, you can't just do write one piece of code which addresses all those collections, right? Okay, if you're doing like a list structure, you're gonna have to do iteration based on the position. If you're doing a set, you'll have to iterate somehow else. You have to, if you're doing a tree set, you have to iterate some other way. So you have a need to know how things are saved in order to be able to pull things out, right? You're bound to the way things are saved. Now, what if you have a pattern in which you could decouple? You have a standardized way of looping over the collection without caring about how things are actually saved. You're basically saying, I'm gonna use a pattern where it doesn't matter whether it's a list or a set, you know, a tree set or a concurrent skip list, whatever else, right? It really doesn't matter. This pattern is guaranteed to work no matter what the collection is, okay? This is using the iterator pattern, okay? The iterator pattern is implementation agnostic, right? It doesn't matter what the implementation is. It separates the traversal algorithm from the collection, okay? It doesn't matter how the, uh, the collection itself is saved, the traversal algorithm is standardized, right? The way the iterator pattern works is by providing a separate iterator object, okay? There is a separate object that you can provide and you iterate based on that object, right? I'm gonna give you an example. You look at some code and you will know what the iterator pattern looks like, okay? 